Did you just buy your first crystal at Anthropology and now you want to learn more? Well, here is your complete beginner's guide to crystals. Hey everyone, my name is Courtney Violetta and I am what I would call a mystical millennial. <laughs> if you are one too, or you're just wanting to learn more about crystals, astrology, spirituality, holistic healing, maybe even some psychic readings and stuff, then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of those. And let's just get on into this video. So first we're going to talk about how to find and choose a crystal. Most of the time when we're just getting into crystals and stuff, we'll tend to buy one at some random store like Anthropology or Urban Outfitters or something like that to just dip our toes in. What you really want to do is go to a metaphysical shop. You'll have so many options of crystals to choose from. So just Google metaphysical shops near me and see what comes up. A big tip that I have is to make sure you get good vibes when you go into one of these places. Good vibes meaning like the people that work there are nice. It just feels light and airy. As for first crystals, I always recommend getting tumbled stones first because you're really able to utilize them on the go. You can always purchase larger stones for your space, but usually tumbled stones are like the entry point into your crystal collection. So when you go to a metaphysical shop, you might be overwhelmed with all of the options of crystals that you can choose from. The best way to do it is to kind of just go in blind. See what different stones call to you. Which ones are you really drawn to? What color? and shapes and different designs within the stones that call to you. The stone that you are most drawn to is what you need in your life. We're usually drawn to different stones because of the different properties that they have and the properties of the stone you choose are what you're needing in your life at that time. So before you go into a metaphysical shop, if you already know what you need a healing property for, you can always Google the stone that's good for that and go there and purchase that as well. Tumbled stones are usually pretty cheap, so if you already go there with the intention of buying a certain one, definitely still look and see which ones are calling to you because you probably need them more than the one you originally set out to go find. So once you find a type of stone that's calling out to you, what you can do is look through all of the ones and find the one that really calls to you, you know? Which one are you really drawn to? Which design within the stone do you think is the most beautiful? Get really quiet in your mind. You can hold the stone in your hand, see if it feels good, if you feel calm. That's how you know if that's your stone. <laughs> If you can't find a good metaphysical shop near you, the one that I love to go to is like two hours away. I also sell crystals on my Etsy shop, so you can always take a look over there and see if any of those are calling out to you as well. So once you get your crystal, you have to cleanse it. Crystals hold energy, so if they have been in the hands of someone who had a bad day or just have like a bad vibe about them, that stone can hold on to their energy. It can also hold on other people's past intentions for it, which we'll talk about in a second. So you wanna cleanse your stone. So there are a few different ways of doing this. I'll talk you through my favorite way of doing it first. So definitely buy some sage when you go to the metaphysical shop. They're usually like about three dollars and there's many different ways you can utilize sage in your home anyway. So the first thing that I recommend doing is saging your stone. All you have to do is light the sage, hold the stone in your hand, and immerse the crystal within the sage's smoke. Personally that's just what I find to be most effective but there are a few other ways you can do it. One other way that I've done is on a full moon sometimes I'll set out a jar of water so that it can be blessed by the moon's energy. Um, so sometimes I'll just dip my stones within that water and then I save that water throughout the whole month. So sometimes if I buy a new stone I'll just dip it within that water as just kind of like a blessing like all of the negative energy is just gone you know. But if when you buy the stone it's also near a full moon you can leave the crystal outside under the light of the full moon or you can leave it on a windowsill that will get some of the moonlight. Another thing you can do is take your crystal and kind of bury it in the earth um, or just rub some dirt on it and this makes it become recharged with the earth's energy. Whatever cleansing method you do it's important to also use a visualization technique of creating a light around you. So what I do always whenever I'm using like a visualization for different things is I imagine a bright white light coming down from the top of the universe all throughout the stars and the planets all the way through the top of earth down into my head throughout my feet out through my hands as you're like saging your stone you can do that visualization technique if you're burying it in the earth you can do that too it just adds a lot more power to the cleansing also you should cleanse your stones every month under the full moon anyway just leave them on your windowsill or you can just sage them once a month to keep their energy really strong 
Another component to working with crystals that is really overlooked is setting an intention for it. Crystals want to work for you, but you have to really tell them what to do. So what you can do is hold your crystal in your hands, close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Tune into your faith, whatever really feels good to you. If you're religious, um, God, if you're spiritual, you know, the universe. If you associate more with a scientific connection, you can also connect with zero point energy, whatever you wanna call it, just tune into something that's greater than yourself. Doing this connects you with your highest vibration. Aloud or in your head, you can say, I ask that the highest vibration of love and light connect with my highest self to clear all unwanted energy or any previous programming. This crystal now holds the intention of blank. So it can be this crystal now holds the intention of psychic development or self-love, you know, whatever, whatever you want. <laughs> you can add up to like three different intentions for your stone because they do a lot of different things. Once you're done with your intention setting, say thank you three different times. This emphasizes to the universe that what you're asking for already exists. So now on to how to use tumbled stones. The easiest way to use tumbled stones is to meditate with them. Let's say you want to heighten your psychic abilities or open your third eye chakra. I'm saying that because my psychic development pack on my Etsy shop is the most popular, so I'm assuming that's something that a lot of people want to do. And that's how I really into crystals in the first place. So there are a lot of different stones that help with psychic development, but just a few include lapis lazuli, amethyst, labradorite, citrine, clear quartz, and many more. So what you can do is take your stone of choice and just place it on your third eye as you're laying down to meditate. Another thing that I like to do is to put peppermint oil on my third eye chakra. Um, because that really emphasizes while I'm meditating that space. So I'm really focused on my third eye. If putting peppermint oil directly on your forehead or on your skin in general is irritating, you can always take your favorite oil that you use on your skin and just put a few drops of the peppermint oil in that to kind of dilute it and then put that little drop on your third eye chakra. And then what I recommend doing is a guided meditation for psychic development. You can find a ton of these on YouTube. My favorite meditation app is called Insight Timer. They have tons of guided meditations. That's how I got into meditating in the first place. Also, I'm thinking about making some guided meditations and putting them on my website. So if that's something you're into, let me know in the comments down below because I would really like to do that one day. Another way to use tumbled stones is to carry them in your pocket throughout the day. I know it's summer, but in winter I always carry crystals in my pockets and just hold them. And when I'm walking around town or in the city, I'll just kind of focus on what the intention for that stone is as I'm walking throughout my life. For example, when I first got into crystals, I would carry a lapis lazuli stone in my pocket when I was living in New York City. And as I walked around the city, I would imagine that same white light coming through me, out through my hands and into the stone. So as I'm walking, I'm still visualizing that and imagining that stone really working my third eye and my crown chakras. That way I'm vibrating high and I'm connected to the higher realm, so I am ready to receive. If your intention for your stone is to ground yourself because you have anxiety or you're under a lot of stress and you just wanna become calm, hold your stone in your hand and go outside. You can sit down or stand up in the grass. Breathe in and out several times. Visualize roots connecting the soles of your feet into the core of the earth. Visualize a green healing light coming back up the roots through the soles of your feet and filling you with healing, vibrating energy. As you go about your day, you can keep the stone in your pocket to remind you of that visualization technique. So now on to how to use larger crystals. So when you have larger crystals, rather than holding them in your pocket or carrying them around with you all day, you can really just place them wherever you want their healing properties to be used. So for example, your doorway of your house. Your doorway is the entry point to your safe space. So you wanna make sure that everything that coming in and out of that space is of positive energy. No one wants a negative person entering their home. So what you can do is place black tourmaline by your doorway. You can place it on the ground or on a table that's nearby and that will collect all of the negative energy that enters your home. So if someone walks in and who has a really bad vibe, that stone will absorb that energy so that it won't fester in your home. Black tourmaline, like I said, it does absorb negative energy so it is important to cleanse it regularly 
or you can leave selenite right by it because selenite cleanses everything that's near it. If you're wanting to connect more with the higher realms and focus more on your spirituality and connect with your divine purpose, or if you really just want to have really vivid, beautiful dreams, you could place celestite on your bedside table or you could just place it in your bedroom. The same goes with amethyst. Amethyst is really great if you're someone who has really bad nightmares or just having trouble sleeping in general. Amethyst really does help with sleep, so placing that on your bedside table or just somewhere in your room will bring much more peace and calming while you're sleeping. Citrine is the stone of success and finding your purpose in life, so placing that in your office is an amazing way to amplify that energy. Rose quartz is the stone of love and self-love, so place that in your bathroom, or you can place it in your bedroom, but if it's in your bathroom, it will infuse all of your products with love. So you can supercharge that self-love energy by placing it all over your skin, all over your body. Rose quartz in the bathroom is amazing. You can even put crystals in your garden. You can place green aventurine in your garden to pulse vitality through your plants and even quartz stones to aid in programming your garden with a different intention. Side note, if you didn't know, you can place an intention when you're growing a garden. So as the garden grows and as your plants grow, your flowers, your intention is also growing with them. Watch this video over here to learn more about the different types of crystals that there are. I made this whole video that goes over all of the different things that you could think of. So I will see you over there in the next video. Bye. Don't pretend you're sorry.